Listen, man, you know, I'm a big fan of your work. I had a ton of questions um, for people that actually don't know your work. If someone has never seen anything, what is the first thing you want them watching and why? Steven, great question out of the gates. Um, you know, I'd have to answer that from not from like an audience perspective, but more a personal perspective is and it's more based on like what more I was going through in my life or the times that I had on that shoot are more so it may not necessarily be the shoot itself or the, the film itself. But and this will probably come satelliting a couple times is godless. Um, I just loved being in New Mexico and on that shoot and on a horse. I loved the character. I loved the story. But I just loved like, you, you know, it's one of the greatest moments in my life as an actor was having a walkie talkie in my saddlebag and them saying, go head over the hill and then we'll tell you when to come back. And I went over that hill and I sat out there and waited for them to call. But, you know, obviously something happened with production and they were messing with something else. So it's all this time went by. And I was sitting there on that horse and that cowboy hat and all that stuff. And it just felt like such a euphoric moment of like, holy shit, like this is what it was like 150 years ago, right here, looking out over nothing. You can't see any, nothing. And you're on this horse that it was just sort of a moment of bliss that stuck with me forever. And I had one of the greatest times on that job, but it's like those little moments like that are, are more so what makes me remember it and not necessarily the, the role in which one would know me from, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, that was a seven episode series and it was fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. We, I, I, I had so much fun shooting that job. I wish it could have lasted 20 years. Yeah. I that was one of those things where I was wondering if they could do more with it. But anyway, um, at, when did you actually feel like you could pay your rent and be an actor for a living? You never feel like you can pay your rent <laughs> as an actor for a living in the future. You know, you, 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 you kind of feel like you can based on what's happening. But I, I, I was 22 working as a carpenter. Um, oh, you were doing the Harrison Ford then? I, I mean, I guess. I think Harrison was probably a much more precise and better carpenter than myself. But but yeah, I was building uh, sets for this event planning company down in south of Los Angeles. And I got a commercial. And so I, I and then I got another one. And then after that, it was it was like I, I, I made more money on those two commercials than my entire salary for the year, which was, I know, which was like, I don't know, 35 grand or something. And I remember I went through a long, you know, two, three years of getting tons of commercials and I quit my job and I n never had another job. Well, you know, 26 years old, there was a lull, you know, and I went right back to like remodeling. I was doing remodeling uh, closets, you know, as a carpenter. So even when you feel like things are never going to change, you, you know, they have so many times throughout my career that you just take don't take anything for granted and it just makes you so much more grateful for any work that you have and so that's more i feel like where my head is is that i'm just grateful and try not to think about the future or the past just think about now and like now is great now is good now i can pay my rent um i don't know if i will be in six months but i'll cross that bridge then uh many people don't many people see you as a more dramatic actor um, when, uh, when I believe Will and Josh called you and said, we want you to do this, which is more comedic. Um, were you like, yes. Oh my God. Yes. Well, no. The first thing I said to them was like, well, y'all are shooting a comedy. And they said, yeah. I said, well, why are y'all calling me? Y you know? And they said, I had worked with them 15 years ago doing commercials. And so I'd done a bunch of, you know, sort of com comedy commercials for them. And, and I just said, I was, they're like, what do you mean? I was like, no one in Hollywood thinks I'm funny. 
you know, and they're like, well, we know you're funny. I was like, well, good luck convincing the studio of that, you know, and anyways, they, 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 they fought for me. They, they really did. I had done some, some comedic stuff for them in the past. And they, I think they sort of saw an ability that I had that, that hadn't been utilized or isn't being utilized. And, and I'm so grateful for them to even give me that, that opportunity. So I was over the moon. I've been trying to, to, to get into something lighter than drama for, for over five years. And so I feel like I'm just now sort of scratching the surface on, on opening up, you know, the different genres that, that I've been able to work in. One of the things uh, about making a film like this is you can actually share it with your entire family, you know, kids. Uh, and we, is that one of the things you were like, oh my God, everyone in my family can watch this? 100%. Because everything I've done in, in the last like 10 years, no one in my family can watch. So, so, so like my kids see me go and come and go. So like, I was so elated to be able to have a project that I could show my kids and, and, and say like, look, this, I even brought them to sat in Atlanta and showed them the, the, the sad and the, the crocodile and, and the CG, I mean, all the different suits and stuff. And so it was just awesome. And for them to see that and then be able to also as well, take them to the premiere of it. Um, you know, yeah, it was, it's a, it's a really sort of special moment for a father, you know what I mean? Or I imagine for any parent to, to, you know, show your children what it is that you do instead of telling them about what it is that you do. And I don't tell them much other than I'm an actor and that's, you know, they're, starting to come to an age now where that's making a lot more sense to them. Be honest, is the Nintendo Switch behind you yours or the kids? <laughs> you want me to be real honest? <laughs> it's my kids and they only got one game on it because I don't know how to set it up or work it or anything. And so like, it really just sits there and until like I take the time to sit down and figure out how to like work it and download the games and stuff, it's just, it just sits there. Uh, I, I have a Nintendo Switch, and I, there was a game I played Animal Crossing for a little while. And uh, anyway, it was it's a, it, it was. Good. I haven't I haven't been a gamer since uh, Madden, John Madden, at probably ninety nine, two thousand was sure, so probably were, my last stint. You were, you were playing on the original PlayStation, not the original PlayStation. No, it was. Uh, I, I don't oh. remember. I think college was around the time that I was like, all right. I got to give this up, you know, I got to focus on other things. <laughs> um, one of the things, listen, Javier Bardem is just such a talented actor. And Will and Josh told me about how he really went for it and was, you know, performing and all just, uh, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, getting to see him up close and the way he works? Cause he, he really always gives it a hundred percent. I mean, uh, you know, not only is he hundred percent talented, the, the guy's a hundred percent professional too. Um, the, sort of energy that he brings, the composure that he brings as an actor and as a person to set is incredibly contagious. He was really, really willing to like try anything and do anything and really put himself out there, which, you know, is what most actors do. But like this was sort of a stretch, I felt like a little bit for him and for him to really come out and, and deliver on that level. And, and also, you know, just be such a wonderful human being in the whole process of it. Um, I mean, he's a, that to me is what a real movie star is, you know, to take all that stress and all that stuff and, and, and just, you know, focus forward and stay professional and stuff. But he, he was so, uh, endearing, complimentary, nice, fun, free. Um, and on top of that, I'm a fan of the guy for so long. So for me, it was a real moment to, to that I was, you know, it was a bonus. I got to do this comedy, Will and Josh. And also, you know, I got to work with an actor I've been wanting to work with since I started this. So um, the whole thing was sort of an eye opening experience. Um, you've done a lot of different projects. Uh, which shot or sequence in all the things you've done uh, do you think ended up being like the most challenging one to pull off? It would be a commercial uh, that I did for Mountain Dew uh, with a, a company called Tractor, this Swedish uh, directorial uh, production company here. And they were crazy. I'd done a ton of crazy, crazy commercials for this one. Them, and on this one, they were like, hey, we want you to swim with sharks. And I was like, 
any other production company, I just said, yeah, but it was tractor. And I was like, all right, I know you guys, I'm not actually going to swim with the shark. And they're like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Of course I was skeptical. Anyways, they had me hanging from these wires and we had to match frame this, this dorsal fin of a shark that was a green screen while sh shooting water cannons at me and swinging at a certain time to match frame to make it look like I was riding this mechanical shark or this, this great white shark. And I just remember it was in December down in Baja at Fox Baja and it was freezing cold. Uh, these cans were getting shot. We were in the water for four days. You know, it was just, it was a lot of fun, but it was, it was definitely one of my most memorable shoots of me saying to myself, you know, I really got to get out of these commercials and get into some else only to know that like, you know, now I'm doing the same thing, but sitting five months in the snow or in the water, you know? Um, but that's a, definitely a, a memorable, uh, shoot for me was that Mountain Dew spot that I did, you know, I don't know, 16 years ago. My, I have a lot of uh, actor friends. And the thing that people don't realize is if you, the, the thing about a commercial though, is if you book a big national ad that ends up going for a while, it can buy you a house. Yeah. I think probably 15 years ago that could happen, but the, the commercial industry is, I mean, yes, there are those, those, yes, they are. They're far and few between though these days from what I hear, but, but yeah, we, 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 we worked a lot on commercials and I went on, you know, six or seven auditions a week. And so, and only got about 15 to 18 of them a year. So if you look at the odds, it's not that high, but, but we, everybody at this, company we were at JPA we we everybody was there did all right you know every time I talk to you I bring up a certain show it's called halt and catch fire uh because I fucking love it um do you find that I mean I do um do you find that people continue to want to talk to you about it or that it's have more people seen it I'm just because it's so good you know what I mean and when it was on it was five people watching it and I was one of the five I knew you were one of the five we talked about this because I knew the other four. Um, honestly, it's it's I I I thought the show was good when we were making it. Um, I thought it was the the writers had really and the showrunners had really really done an interesting job. I didn't think it was before ahead of its time. You know, you just don't know why things not aren't catching on. But I always believed in the show and and, and believed in the in the writers and the showrunners and and. Uh, it was just getting eyes on it, I feel like. And during the pandemic, when everybody went through those, their, their, you know, list of things to watch, they eventually hit it. And, and I feel like a lot of people watched that show over the pandemic. And I did get a lot of, uh, you know, whatever texts and stuff saying, Hey, I hadn't seen the show. It's really good. And, 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 uh, I just feel like, you know, that, that was, did us wonders, you know, in regards to that show, the sad thing about it is that I really wanted the show to keep going and get into modern times with computers. And so, you know, it didn't really gain speed until we had already been shut down. So, um, you know, I would have, uh, it was a great show, wonderful experience, great cast, uh, a great time, huge learning experience for me. It was my first series I'd ever done. Um, so that was a big, um, uh, I'm very grateful for that learning experience, but, but, um, yeah, people, people seem to, 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 to were viewing it much more over the pandemic. And after the pandemic, it did feel like that it did get the viewership that we never got, um, previously when we were airing. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm just grateful it, it was even on, you know, and it had more than one season and, you know, it's just, it's a, you know what I mean? Every season we did, we had to bookend it because we just never knew if we were coming back. And, uh, you know, that's the nature of the game, but but it would have been so nice to, to know that and tie in, because these guys would have tied in things from different seasons and stuff. But regardless, they did a fantastic job at weaving that, uh, that needle through that show. I totally agree. I looked at the always accurate IMDB and you have some pretty cool stuff coming up. You got to work on Fairyland and Night Bitch and, uh, you know, the, uh, blood for dust the line um do you take breaks yeah i mean i i do i i i i took a huge break at the beginning of the year and i took about four months off and hung with my kids and my partner and you know i do take times off but like also when i start working i'll, I'll kind of 
I, I it, in a perfect world, you kind of bang out as much stuff as you can all together and then pull the rip cord and, you know, take two months off, three months off or so. But I love working. So it's, it's the hardest thing in this business. People ask me, what's the hardest thing in the entertainment business? It's saying no. You, you know, it's like you, you, you want to do all these projects and you waited around for a decade to work sure. and you couldn't sure. get it. And now it's here and you have to say no to things is really uh, confusing and, and, and hard sometimes. I can't imagine. Um, but t- tell me actually of the projects, you got to work with Amy Adams. Um, and I'm curious about this, these upcoming projects. What can you say about some of them? Um, uh, Amy, the film I did, Night Pitch with Amy Adams, um, Mari Heller was heading up as director. And just with those two, I mean, a, an incredible duo. Um, it's a wild, wild, movie and story and weird and it's totally out of the brain i mean it's a an adaptation but i mean the film is out of the brain of mari heller so it's we did some crazy stuff on it um i think it's going to be really sad and fun funny endearing uh there's a bit of a horror element to it um but all in all this one is going to be such a surprise i think to me and even a bigger surprise to audiences that for me to even sort of try to explain what it's about or what happens in it would not do it justice. And also I probably could be way off. I, uh, I heard it, a little bit about what it's about and it sounds crazy. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it, and also when they put it together with all the things that are happening to Amy and, and, and stuff yeah. that I, it's, it's going to be interesting. And then, um, Fairyland is a film that Andrew Durham directed um, with uh, Greg Latouro and, and Sofia Coppola uh, producing and it's the memoir of Steve Abbott, a um, bisexual or gay um, writer, poet um, that raised his daughter as a single father in the Castro d- just before the AIDS um, epidemic. And essentially, it's the story about the love of a father for his daughter. And, you know, it's a true story, but also for me, it was about what a father, the extents that a father will go to for their child, you know, and how you just, it doesn't matter if you get it right or get it wrong, as long as you show up as a, as a parent. Um, I think it's going to be a beautiful film. Um, I'm really excited about it. And um, Blood for Dust, I'm, I'm, I'm just about to, to get started on that. Um, Rod Blackhurst is heading that up as a film, as the di- director. Um, it starts Josh Lucas and Kit Harrington as well. Um, and it's more of a fun uh, popcorn uh, cat and mouse, cat and mouse uh, story, but, but like with Rod uh, Blackhurst's touch to it, you know, he, he's it's very, very specific. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to use another film to sort of explain it, but, um, you know, I hadn't started it either. I think you discover a lot about a film and a character when you're doing it. So I'll probably have more for you the next time I talk to you about that particular project. I I, I won't. Uh, I totally understand. Um, uh, I, I'm basically out of time with you. I'm just going to say that, um, as always, it is a pleasure to talk. I wish you nothing but the best, you know, and, and uh, obviously if we can ever do anything for you on Collider, just let me know. You're awesome, Stephen. And again, thank you for for all your shout outs and being a fan and all that stuff. It's it's, it's so appreciated. And I love that you were with us on Haunt and Catch Fire from the get go. It means a lot to me. Man, fucking I love that show, you know, and I, and I and I also love AMC for putting it on. I know. Right. They stuck with us. They stuck with us when no one was watching. They still give us a chance. And I, I, I am hugely grateful to them as well. Um, on that note, good luck with the rest of your speed dating today. And, um, you know, the, the switch is easy to hook up. Figure it out. I think your kids will like it. You're awesome, Stephen. <laughs> Later, man. Later, buddy.